Okay, so we are doing the review for exam number three, and this is question number one on exam review number three. And question one says, the bank statement for Kate's company indicates a balance of $1,730 on June 30th. The cash balance for books had a balance of $799 on this date. The following information pertains to the bank transactions for the company, and they have an A, B, C, D, and E. And the instructions are, they want you A, to prepare a bank reconciliation for June 30th, and B, prepare any adjusting entry, entries necessary as a result of the bank reconciliation. Okay, so we are going to prepare the bank reconciliation. So we always start, if they don't tell you, or if they don't have it there already, you always start with the name of the company at the top. And this is uh, Kate's company. And this is a bank reconciliation. And the date is June 30th and they didn't get it. Okay, so we always start out with Cash, oops, cash balance per bank. Okay, cash balance per bank goes on the top, all right? So we do cash balance per bank, and the problem told us that the cash balance per bank was, let's see, they told us it was what? Um, the bank statement for Kate's company indicates a balance of $1,730 on June 30th. So our cash balance per bank is $1,730. Okay. We are then going to add for any deposits in transit. Now remember, just because you go through the process of adding and subtracting things, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will have those. I would assume that you will always have deposits in transit and you will always have outstanding checks, uh, but you may not always have an error and you may not always have a non-sufficient funds fee or you may not always have a bank charge or things like that, okay? Um, okay, so the next step is we add our deposits in transit. Oh, and you'll know like if you, um, uh, like if you don't have deposits in transit, you'll be able to tell by the number of boxes that you have or don't have to where, you know, when you do it on paper, you don't have that. So, all right, deposits in transit. So let's read through the rest of this here. It says, um, cash balance per book was $799 on this date. Okay. And A says, deposit of $260 representing cash receipts of June 30th did not appear on the bank statement. Oh, well, that's it right there. They made a deposit of $260. It did not appear on the bank statement. So that's a deposit in transit. That means it hasn't hit the bank yet. So we're going to add $260 for the deposits in transit. So we're actually going to add the, those two together and put the total there. And that total, remember, it doesn't have a title or anything. It just kind of hangs out there on its own. All right. So we've got 1730 plus 260, so we've got $1,990. We are then going to um, do less. And less is going to be for any outstanding checks. So let's go up to the list. So we already took care of A, so we can cross that one off. Let's go to B. B, outstanding checks, total 340. So right there is your outstanding checks. So outstanding checks is $340, we're gonna subtract that. So we are going to, um, I'm gonna make, uh, we've got $1,990 minus the $340. So we've got an adjusted balance of $1,650. And that's called the adjusted cash balance per bank. Adjusted cash balance per bank. And that's a double underline. Okay. So that's the top part. Now we're going to work on the bottom part. And on the bottom part, we start with cash balance per books. And they told us in the very, very top paragraph that Oh, the cash balance per books had a balance of $799 on the state. And when they say per books, they're talking about the T account. The T account had a balance of $799 in the cash account. Okay. 
So we start with $799. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look for any, um, any notes that were collected for us, you know, any money that was transferred into our account, or if we have to do any errors. Now, what I would do is I would look through the problem first and see if there's any that it describes, and I did that for this one, and there are not any errors. So we will not be adding or subtracting for errors, but if we had to add for an error, then we have to make sure we put that in the add section. If we have to subtract for an error, then we would put that in the subtract section. You're not gonna get any bank errors for the um, bank part, okay? If there's any errors, it's gonna be in the book part on the bottom. Okay, so let's see. Um, C said the uh, bank service charge for June amounted to $25. So that's gonna be a less, not an add. Uh, D says the bank collected a note receivable for the company for $900 plus $56 interest revenue. Well, there it is right there, okay? So now we are going to add for um, note collected by bank. And it's going to be $800 plus, um, I mean, $900 plus $56. So $956, okay. Now we don't have anything else to add at this point. So we are going to add those two numbers together. And that's going to be a number that just kind of sits there like that with, with no, uh, no title or anything, okay. Then we are going to move to the less items. We would, we would subtract for errors, we would subtract for fees, we would subtract for non-sufficient funds checks. So let's see, um, we saw there was a fee on C. C says bank service charge for June amounted to $25. So we have bank service charge. Now, if you only have one item under add or less, you push it all the way over here in this column, right? But we actually are going to have two items for less because if you look, um, item E is a non-sufficient funds check. So we're going to actually indent these. And you're, you'll be able to tell on your problem because while you'll have the box um, marked like that, you'll have a box, right? So you'll know that, there, that it goes over in this area, okay, versus just putting it over here, okay? So less bank service charge, $25. And then we had a non-sufficient funds check. So that is E, it says an NSF check for $80 from a customer is returned with the statement. So we're going to put less and uh, less, oops, less NSF check. And that was for $80. And that's uh, the total that we have for the less items, and we've addressed, we have addressed A, B, C, D, and E. So now we're gonna add $80 and $25 together, both of these, and that is going to give us $105. So we're gonna subtract that $105 from the 17, 7, 1755. So we've got 1755 minus $105. So that tells us that our adjusted cash balance per books is 1650 and that matches the adjusted cash balance per bank and that's what we want. Those two numbers we need to um, match. Adjusted cash balance per book. All right, so let me stop the recording on that one.